I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but the number of robotic lawnmowers that have been coming out on the market lately is astonishing. And I got to be honest, most of them are very similar, very basic, and none of them really stand out. And a lot of them are quite expensive for what they are. But I've been testing one for the last three or four months now. And this back here, mowing my lawn right now, is the Yarbo. And what makes this special and different than any other lawnmower out there on the market today is that this is not just a lawnmower. It is also a snowblower, a leaf blower. It could be a trimmer and a bunch of other accessories that you can buy separately all in one. Now, it is quite expensive. So in today's video, we're going to talk about my user experience with this and see if it's worth it or not. So let's jump in the video. Now, for full disclosure, they did send this out to me for a full, honest review. And I got to be honest, it hasn't been all sunshine and roses. It's actually been quite difficult. And I'm going to tell you all the issues I have with it. Um, but I do want to thank them for sending this out to me so I can honestly review it for you guys. And at the time of this recording, they are having a sale right now. So definitely check out the film links down in the description below if you want to get the current pricing and more information. Now, when I first got there, I was super excited. You go through this big unboxing process and you do have to put it together and did take me probably about an hour or so to put this together. So understand that there are little pieces that you have to screw on. You have to put the antennas on. Um, there's a whole process to unboxing this. So just be aware of that. And then when you get everything unboxed, you're going to want to first set up the RTK station. And this will communicate with different satellites and with the robot just to give it a fixed point within your yard. Now, this RTK station does have to be plugged in to your router or your network. Somehow it has to have an Ethernet wire plugged in. Now, it does come with a power over Ethernet injector, which will also need to be plugged in unless you have a power over Ethernet device that can power this. So there's two things you have to plug in, the Ethernet wire and also the power over Ethernet injector has to go into a standard outlet. And that all has to be outside and it has to be open to the skies. Understand if it doesn't have access to the skies, I think it, they mentioned 270 degrees, it will not properly work. So you want to plug everything in. If you're using power over Ethernet and not the injector, uh, make sure you're using the wire directly from your switch, your power over Ethernet switch right into the RTK station. You don't need to use the power over Ethernet adapter at all. You just go straight into the RTK station. So when you first set this up, you can plug everything up and then you want to make sure that it has a green light. The higher, the better. If you can mount this to your roof, great. If you're next to your property, your house, it's not going to work properly. It has to have as much vision of the skies as possible. If you're near trees, you're going to have issues. You got to be far away as possible from anything that's going to block it from the skies. Um, and then you're going to want to bury those wires. Now, once you set that up, you can now set up the power pad, which will charge us up wirelessly. If uh, most kits, I think, come with this, which is really cool. This just plugs into a normal outlet. You can run, run the wires and they have little covers to protect those wires. And then you screw everything down to the ground. And this also needs to have a place where it can see the skies. It doesn't need to be as open as the RTK station, but you definitely don't want it right next to the house. You do want this more in the open because this is where the robot's going to be sitting. And if the robot doesn't have a, a GPS signal where it's sitting when it starts, you're going to have issues with it being able to go out there. Um, and that's definitely a downside of having to place not only the RTK station, but the power pad, both within open skies and having a power source or ethernet source. So keep that in mind before you buy this, that you're going to 
want to have location set up for this before you decide to buy it. It is really cool to see a wireless charging pad instead of trying to plug this in. Really like that. It's definitely something different than any other lawnmower that I've tested before or seen on the market. This is the only one that I've seen that has a wireless charging pad, which is really cool. And just be aware, and just be aware, this will tear up the yard in front of the power pad and maybe even on the side, just as it's lining up and because it has tracks, it's just going to tear up that yard. So if you can find a place where you don't mind it tearing up the yard a little bit, then that's going to be more ideal for you. And this battery is huge and heavy, just like everything else about this big, bulky, heavy, built like a tank and you know, it comes with a hefty price tag, but the build quality, except for those plastic wheels, have been great. Also, one of the things that I had to do, I'm not sure if they've fixed this by the time that you get your unit, but I had to put this like gel stuff onto one of the motherboards just because they had some issues in the past. I guess water getting into one of the boards. If you have to do it, you can see here in the video, there's step-by-step -step videos out there, but you can see in my video, you just push it on and it was kind of self levels and it was fairly easy. Um, you do want to let it dry, but just be aware. Um, this was something I had to do and I didn't mind doing it. It is what it is. It just took a couple hours to dry after I did it. And then you're going to want to map your yard and you can create multiple zones. For instance, I have four big zones and a couple small zones just to break it up. Um, so I can say go clean zone one, which is like the front right. And then I do have a fence. Be aware if you have a fence, you will have to manually open that fence and let the robot through. You can make a path within the app. But if it's not open, the robot cannot get through. So you do either have to manually open it up every time you move from the front yard to the backyard or you have to keep it open all the time. So you're gonna be walking the perimeter of your zone. Be aware when you have different attachments, you do want to redo that zone. And do be aware you do want to map with the attachment on. Don't just use the core and try to map it because it's just not gonna map correctly. Obviously the lawnmower sticks out very far into the front and you need to account for that as you're setting up your perimeter. Also, then you're going to want to set up no-go zones. So for instance, if you have trees or flower beds, you can also have a no-go zone for like your mailbox or things that are fixed, maybe a cable box, that type of thing. Obviously, this thing has vision that can avoid stuff like this, but it's really better to set this up from the beginning because these are fixed no-go zones. And this is where I ran into my first issue. When I was on my main voyage of mapping my yard, I heard a small little bang and I slowed down the robot. I was actually using the remote at the time and I noticed this black disc or part of a black disc coming out from underneath. And I was like, what is this? And I started turning just a little bit and then I started seeing two more pieces of this black disc. And then I realized the track was coming off. So unfortunately, the rear right wheel somehow broke in three pieces. And unfortunately, these wheels are kind of like a plastic material. It's definitely not metal and it definitely looked and feel like plastic. Obviously, there's a lot of different types of materials out there, but this thing broke in three pieces and I wasn't doing anything abnormal, didn't bang it on anything. I was just mapping my yard. So. I did have to wait a couple of weeks for them to send out a part. And fortunately, I'm pretty handy and this was pretty easy to replace. And this is actually something you're going to probably have to experience yourself putting a wheel on or wheel off just because you're going to have to grease the tracks. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to have the broken wheel like I have, but you will have to remove the tracks probably every season and grease everything up. So this definitely is going to have maintenance that you will have to do. You have to grease the tracks. You'll have to clean it out. You're going to have to change the blades. So understand a device like this does save you a lot of time on weekly mowing. 
but unfortunately you're still going to have maintenance issues you're going to have to maintain but that goes with any smart lawnmower out there they are definitely not maintenance free you will have to do work to them occasionally they're not set and forget it type of devices even though they save you a lot of time. Now, when it came to lawn mowing, it does a terrific job, and there's a lot of different settings that you can do within the app. You can adjust the height, which keep in mind, depending on what type of grass that you have. Also, obstacles in the yard. You do want to make sure that they're clear, but understand this does have cameras, and it can see obstacles, small and large, and it does a fairly good job, but if you can keep it clean, it's going to do much better. The only downside that I've had with the lawn mowing and pretty much the biggest issue I've had with this is that it's losing GPS signal all the time. And it's mostly under trees. So if you have a lot of trees on your properties, unfortunately, I don't know what's going on. Uh, when I first got this, it was pretty much unusable. And I did have to contact support multiple times and they worked with me for over a month trying to get it working. And I'm at a point where it's pretty good now, but it definitely stops almost every single time. It has not done one single run without me intervening, where intervening means that you have to use the remote, you have to connect to it, either your phone, and move it around the yard so it can get a GPS signal back. So at this point, it does pretty good where I can definitely do this review. But understand that if you have a lot of trees on your property, this is not something that you I can recommend just because it's losing GPS signal all the time for whatever reason. Even though it has been getting better, unfortunately, it's still hard unless you have a open lot. So keep that in mind before you decide to buy this. But one thing that I have been loving is the follow me mode where you do have this attachment on the front which they call the core which has some cameras and it can follow you around so you can put on the hitch on the back and you can pull different attachments whatever you have for instance i have this yard cart that i can put spring stuff in or i can put dirt in and this thing can pull it and follow me around the yard i can use the xbox controller and move it around that way or I can put it in follow me mode and it does fairly well. I noticed a couple of times in the follow me mode that it would lose me and then I would have to come back and it worked. And then sometimes it would lose me and I came back and it didn't work. So I think it's still in beta. It works most of the time, but it still is not perfect. But when it's working, it's really good. Obviously, it's slow. So you do have to walk slow and make sure it stays within vision of you. But it's really cool if it's pulling something really heavy like all this dirt. I could do it myself much faster, but you know, if I had a bad back or something, having something like this to pull it around the yard definitely is a huge plus. And one tip, don't forget to put the screw into the tow hitch. It will come undone, as you can see here. And the cart went backwards. Luckily, it didn't spill over or anything, but definitely put in the little screw so you don't run into the similar issue that I did. And then when it comes to different attachments, did test out the blower, which is really cool. I don't know how much I'm going to be using the blower. I thought I was going to be using it more just because I wanted to be able to blow the grass off of the driveway, but because it really does this fine mowing. So really, there's no point of having that blower unless you're going to be using it for leaves. And it really is nice that you can set up this leaf blower to blow all the leaves in one direction. You can say in the app to say, blow it in this direction towards this side of the perimeter. And then just have that one place in the yard where you have to pick everything up. And it does it really well. It's designed very well where it knows what direction it's blowing. And then it will turn off the blower, move in the direction that it needs to, get to the side that it needs to, and then turn it back on and blow in that one direction. Really brilliant design. And then you can have the hose attachment that you can manually do it, which is a great feature to have also. And lastly, I do want to mention 
wherever you're putting this power pad, expect for it to tear up your yard in front on the sides. Just be aware of these tracks going in and out and moving around, trying to line up will tear up your yard around wherever your power pad is. You can see here the area that I have it also gets a lot of water, so it gets muddy and it's just totally disgusting. Eventually, I'll move it to a different area, but it does tear up the grass right near the power pad, so be aware of that. And I can't wait for the winter to use this as a snowblower, and I can't wait for the other attachments to come out. There's a trimmer coming out. There is a cedar, and I, I think there's a couple other ones coming out on the market. And having the ability to change attachments is really, really cool. Now, I wish these attachments would automatically detach and attach themselves, but unfortunately, you mainly have to do each one. But having the ability to change them is a huge plus, and that's why I love about this, even though it is quite expensive. And now let's go ahead and talk about if it's worth it or not. And I got to be honest here, it's going to vary hang on your yard. If you have a lot of tree covering, then absolutely skip it. You're going to have too many issues. But if you have mostly uncovered yard, you have access to the skies, I think you're going to have the best experience. And that is totally worth it. You're going to be able to send this out there without any issues. It's not going to stop. It's going to pick up that GPS signal. But if you do have a lot of tree coverings or you can't handle all of the little issues and the annoyances of it stopping and you have to go out there and move it around so it can get a GPS signal um, and paying that much, you expect it to work 100%. And honestly, um, it's not. So you might want to wait a year or two and come back and visit and see if Yarbo has fixed all the bugs with its GPS um, because that is the huge issue when you're paying so much for this. But if you have a big open yard, I think this is going to be awesome for you. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I hope this video was helpful. I'll be leaving a link down below where you can get more information and current pricing. Like I mentioned earlier, they are having a major sale going on right now. So definitely check it out if you're interested at all. And if you're brand new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that like button. It truly helps out the algorithm and makes me feel good inside. All right, you guys, see you on the next one.